welcome to Rich Thoughts TV. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my super fine wife, Beth. On today's call, we're going to talk about seven keys to God's timing. Mm. Now, it's football season. If a quarterback's timing's off, he's going to have a bad day with more interceptions and touchdowns. And this is clearly evident in a lot of weeks uh, if you watch NFL games, sometimes even the Cowboys. If a basketball player or the high school, college, or professional has his timing off, he's not going to be able to make a free throw, no matter how big the rim is. In life, if your timing's off, you can miss possibilities mm -hmm. and opportunities for success. Timing is critically important in life. Something can be a good idea. It can be a great idea. Hey, it can even be a God's idea. But if it's for it to be successful, it's got to be in God's time. That is true. Here are seven things you ought to know about his timing. Number one, the Holy Spirit gives you the timing. Mm. You ever wondered if it was the right time to make a career change, to ask somebody to marry you? True. Can you do that again, please? I like that. Ask someone to marry you, to present your ideas to the supervisor. I'm happy. Uh, no Knowing when to speak is equally important to what you're going to say. That's it. Acts 1, 7, 8. Acts 1, 7, 8, Message Bible. He told them, you don't get to know the time. Timing's the Father's business. Mm. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you'll be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all over Judea and Samaria, yes. even to the ends of the world. Wow. There's one absolute to making right decisions at the right time, and that's the unction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you ever started to do something, but something just didn't feel right in, you, in your stomach. This is how you know, huh, baby? Yeah, and it's not because you had too many... All opinions. It was the unction of the Holy Spirit going telling on. you that it wasn't the right time. That's it. To do what you were going to do. Listen, when we obey the voice of the Holy Spirit, we not only avoid trouble, but we make decisions oh, that will succeed instead of fail. And that is where we want to go. That's it. Number two, being in the wrong place at the right time. That's what I mean. Being at the wrong place at the right time. Let me show it to you. Because that's one of the devil's favorite tricks. You know, having us where we shouldn't be so that he has the ability to tempt us to do stuff we know we shouldn't do. That's true. In 2 Samuel 11, verses 1 through 3, in the classic Amplified Bible, we're talking about King David. It says, in the spring, when kings go forth to battle... David sent Joab and his servants and all Israel, and they ravaged the Amorites' country and besieged Ramah. But David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David arose from the couch and was walking on the roof of the king's house. When there, from there, he saw a woman bathing, and she was very lovely to behold. David sent and inquired about the woman. One said, is not that... Isn't that Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite? King David's greatest mistake wasn't the adultery with Bathsheba, the murder of Uriah, her husband, or even the cover-up. Think about this. His greatest mistake was that he was at the wrong place at the right time. The scripture says when spring, when kings go to war, and you read through the rest of it, it says David tarried in Jerusalem. David was supposed to be at war with his troops. He wasn't directing the, you know, he wasn't out there with his troops and he wasn't directing the battle. In short, he wasn't really where he was supposed to be. He was in the wrong place at the right time for Satan to catch him up. It was the right time for the enemy, the wrong time for David. So his flesh and the lust of the flesh tempted him and overtook him. Have you ever put yourself in a position where you know you shouldn't be? Maybe it's talking to a coworker of the opposite sex who gives you attention that maybe you're not getting at home at that time. Perhaps you put yourself in a position where you could take something from your employer thinking, 
well, they're number one, they'll never miss it. And number two, I'm underpaid and underappreciated. You know, we can always rationalize in the flesh, but you know, the point of it is, is you don't answer to them. You're going to answer to God for what you do. Or maybe you're cruising the internet and you inadvertently land on something that you know you shouldn't be watching or you know you shouldn't be seeing. And that visit then gets part of your you know, computer and you want to go back there. That is, that is trouble looking for trouble right there. And if King David had been in God's timing where he was supposed to be, where it says where kings are supposed to be, and where he was supposed to be, there would have been a totally different story for him, for his whole family, and for Israel. So true. Number three, delay doesn't mean denial. Habakkuk 2.3, 2.3, mm-hmm. classic amplified. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, and it hastens to end fulfillment. It will not deceive or disappoint. Though it tarry, wait earnestly for it, because... It will surely come. Mm. It will not be behind, uh, but there on its appointed day. Yes. Over the 13 years after Ishmael was born, no doubt Abraham wondered if the promises of God were ever going to come to pass. God wants us to understand that like Abraham, we may be waiting for the manifestation of our promise, but our time is coming. Hallelujah. Can you say, my time is coming? He directed me to write these words for you. Tell my children to hold fast to the confession of their faith. Mm. What I've promised will come to pass. Delay does not mean denial. We'll read that one more time. Tell my children to hold fast to the confession of their faith. What I've promised will come to pass. Hallelujah. Delay does not mean denial. Remember, God is not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23 19. Delay tactics are still a favorite deception of the enemy because he seeks to trip us up by filling us with doubt. The enemy wants you to believe that salvation will never come to your house. But that's not what the word says. The enemy wants you to believe that deliverance from debt will not manifest in your life. But that's not what the Word says. The enemy wants you to believe that your healing or that of a loved one will never manifest. Mm. But that's not what the Word says. The enemy wants you to think the job market is hopeless and that you'll never get another job. But that's not what the Word says. The enemy wants you to think the Lord is not interested in your needs or fulfilling the promises that he's made to each of us in his word. Second Peter 3 9. Second Peter 3 9. Classic Amplified. The Lord does not delay and is not tardy or slow about what he promises, according to some people's conception of slowness. But he is long suffering, mm. extraordinarily patient towards you, not desiring that any should pray that all should come to repentance. I love that scripture. And it's often quoted as a verse, give hope to to people that loved ones will be saved. However, there's much more at work in this verse. Part of it again says, the Lord does not delay, it's not tardy or slow about what it promises. If you've been going through the fire, if you feel like you've been to hell and back, then you need to hold on to the first part of that verse. God does not delay, but the enemy would yes. like to, would like to, if he can, to hinder the arrival of God's answer mm. to the circumstances and problems that you're facing. Daniel 10, 12 through 14. 10, 12 through 14. New Living Translation. Then he said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for an understanding, to humble yourself before your God. Your request has been heard in heaven. I've come in answer to your prayer. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the arch, 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 
with angels came to help me. And I left him there with the spirit prince, the king in Persia. Now I'm here to explain what will happen to your people. In the future for this vision. It's so exciting. Concerns. I know. Concerns a time yet to come. That's it. So you need to heed the words of Psalm 11960. 1960, New Living Translation. Hmm. I will hurry without delay to obey your commands. Wow. Even though you've been waiting for an answer, a manifestation, don't give in, give up, back up, back down, sit down, quit, or walk away, because your answer's coming. It is. How? He's heard your prayer. That Daniel says he's heard your prayer, and he's on a way with an answer in his timing. Number four, our time is in his hands. I could, we could preach a whole sermon just on that alone. Yes, we could. In Psalm 31, 15, this in the King James Version, it says, My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my foes and those who pursue, pursue me and persecute me. You know, no matter how intense or how much you're going through at this point in your life, God likes to assure you that he's got your back, that he's going to deliver you from your enemies. And by the way, he is always on time. He will sustain us through things that we want to get delivered through, delivered of sometimes. But in Acts 1 7, Acts 1 7, Classic Amplified is said, and he said to them, it is not for you to become acquainted with and know what time brings the things and events in time and their definite periods or fixed years or seasons, their critical niche in time, which the father has appointed, fixed and reserved by his own choice and authority and personal power. If we, if you know God, you will know his timing in due season. Sometimes it's not, the problem is, is sometimes we want it to be our time instead of his timing and everybody well, fights against that. Ecclesiastes 9.11 in the New Century Version said, here's something else I've seen in the earth. Races aren't always won by those who run fast. Battles aren't always won by who is strong. Wise people don't always have plenty of food. Clever people aren't always wealthy. Those who have learned a lot aren't always favored. God controls the timing of every event. He also controls how things turn out. You know, we can help him in those things by leaving things in his hands and not trying to run ahead of him. Listing, there's a list of seven things in Isaiah 49, 8. Isaiah 49, verse 8, classic amplified, that show these things. It says this, thus says the Lord in an acceptable and favorable time, I have heard and answered you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. And I will preserve you and give you a covenant to the people to raise up and establish the land from its present state of ruin and to apportion and cause them to inherit the desolate moral waste of heathenism, their heritages. First, I'm going to go through them. It is an, in an acceptable and favorable time. We have to wait on God. Second, I have heard and answered you. So he's heard us, even though we say, did you hear us up there, Lord? <clears throat> Third, in the day of salvation, I have helped you. So he's saving us. And fourth, I love this one. I will preserve you. Sometimes in the wait, you think, am I going to perish? No, because God promised he will preserve us. Fifth, I will give you a covenant for the people. And we have received a covenant that we can stand on. Sixth, to raise up and establish the land, which has actually happened. And seventh, to cause an inheritance for the faithful ones. So whether it be the faithful Israel on this earth or the Israel of heaven, you might say, God is got it in his timing. So the truth of the matter is, is, is to know that this is your time of deliverance. We, yeah, we need to be faithful. Which is number and five. Not worry about anything, but pray about everything. That's it. Second Corinthians 6 2. 
2 Corinthians 6 to Amplified Bible. Mm. For he says, In the time of favor, of an assured welcome, I have listened to and heeded your call, and I have helped you on the day of deliverance, the day of salvation. Behold, now is truly the time for a gracious welcome and acceptance of you from God. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In the words that you are tired. Psalm 3 8, New King James. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. According to Strong's Concordance, the word for salvation is the Hebrew word H3444. H3444. It means salvation, deliverance, prosperity, victory. The New Living Translation of Psalm 3 8 says, Victory comes from you, O Lord. May you bless your people. God wants to deliver you, to save you from your old way of thinking and living. He wants you delivered, saved from a life of sin and indifference to the world and the Word. God wants you saved. Yes, totally delivered from four financial, poor financial or other decisions that have kept you bound mm. to sin, sickness, call it what it is, stupidity. The word salvation found in Psalm 3.8 is one used in one of my favorite verses, Exodus 14.13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation mm. of the Lord, Hallelujah. which he will show you today. For the Egyptians you see today, you shall never see them again. The New International Version, pretty much the same. That last sentence says, the Egyptians you see today, you'll never see again. The enemies you see today, your creditors, debtors, you'll never see again. Mm. But you must not be afraid. You must stand firm. And see the deliverance of the Lord that he will bring you today. Mm. Number six, make the most of every minute God gives you. In Colossians 4 verse 5, classic amplified, it says this, Behave yourself wisely, living prudently and with discretion in your relations with those of the outside world, the non-Christians, making the very most of the time and seizing, buying up, the opportunity. What we are able to do, the witness we can give to people who do not know the Lord is, well, it's eternal in its outcome. We need to make a list every night of what we might need to accomplish the next day, assign a priority list to our task, and be about God's business. Have the, ask the Holy Spirit to show you what needs to be done. And then we need to Avoid or the distractions that people want to throw in our way that we know is he is hindering us from being able to heed those words that the Lord has given us. Sometimes people will prevent us from achieving the things that, that have been purposed in our hearts to achieve for the Lord that day. But there's always times too when the Lord will send somebody in for us to have to stop. We need to be sent, uh, sensitive to the Holy Spirit in this. So in the next 24 hours, we are all given the same precious gift. Not money, gold, silver, or real estate, but something even more valuable. It represents 86,400 seconds or another day of our lives. The only restriction to these days is that it's got to be invested or spent because when the time is up, there's no rollover minutes. We will have done what we've done during that day. So we need to use and make good use of every day wisely before that midnight hour comes and that day is gone forever. In Ephesians 5, 11 through 16, in the Message Bible, it says, don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work, the barren pursuits of darkness. Expose these things for the sham they are. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness when no one will see. 
Rip the cover off those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. Wow. Wake up from your sleep. Climb out of your coffins. Christ will show you the light. Oh. So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. And we can say there are times that things are very desperate. But we strongly encourage you to do a little time survey to determine where and how you're spending your time, as opposed to maybe what you should not be spending your time on. Because Ephesians 5.16, Classic Amplified, says making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity. In other words, investing in it because the days are evil. We need to manage our minutes to maximize our effectiveness for the kingdom of God. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says in the New King James Version, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Number seven, redeem the time. King Solomon in all his wisdom said something profound mm. in Ecclesiastes 3.11 when he said, he's made everything beautiful in its time. In its time. King David had the greatest dynasty in the history of Israel because he trained his military commanders to understand the times and to know what they should do. First Chronicles 12, 32. First Chronicles 12, 32. New Living Translation. For the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these people understood the signs of the times and they knew the best course for Israel to take. King Xerxes not only understood the importance of time, but he surrounded himself with wise men who knew the importance of time. Esther chapter 1 verse 13. Esther 1 13. Classic Alpha. Mm. Then the king spoke to the wise men who understood the times, asking their advice. What was the custom of the king? To speak for all those mm. who were familiar with the law in legal matters. God is aware of the importance of acting in the right time. Galatians 4, 4, 4, 4, classic amplified. But when I'm in God's plan, the proper time has fully come. God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the regulation of the law. See, Jesus didn't come too early or too late. That's it. He was right on time. Wow. You and I should be rejoicing because the Bible says that we can redeem the time. I love that. Ephesians 5, 16, New King James or King James. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Hallelujah. According to Strong's Concordance, the Greek word for redeem is G-1805. G-1805. To redeem by payment of a price, to recover from the power of another, to ransom, buy off, make wise, and sacred use mm. of every opportunity for doing good. It is clear from the strong definition that redeem means to repurchase time. God will not only allow us to buy back some time. Joel 2.25, 2.25, classic amplified. And I will compensate you for the years that the swarming locust is eating, the creeping locust, the stripping locust, the gnawing locust, my great army which I sent among you. King James Version of Joel 2.25, I will restore to you the years. Yep, that the canker worm has eaten. That's so good. Proverbs 6.31. I love this. Classic too. Amplified. But when he is found, he must repay seven times what he stole. He must give all the property of the house, if necessary, to the fire. The enemy steals more than valuables and money. That's right. He steals ideas, and truthfully, he can even steal time. We continually pray for a sevenfold restoration mm. for all the enemy is stolen from you and your loved ones. Hallelujah. We maximize our time. By the things we're doing. That's it. Ecclesiastes 5, 16. Ephesians, actually. I was just testing, testing me. Yeah. I know. 
Ephesians 5.16. I'll repeat later. Ephesians 5.16. Classic, classic Amplified. Make the very most of the time your time on earth. Yes. Recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence mm -hmm. because the days are filled with evil. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I want to say something to you. This is the time of year when people start Christmas shopping. Well, we got a place for you to go where we have sales all the time. Where Not we, only that, it lets you keep Jesus' presence in your presence, that's it. which is what we like. Spread the kingdom of God. Come to the Christian soldier. Check out the incredible details that we have. Yes. So many blessings. So many blessings. Offered for you. That's it. Also, one other thing. Make sure you support WHFL TV. Terry West, the team, they do an incredible job. Yeah. And they're blessing people in many cities, towns. That's why you're hearing this tonight. That's it. Just ask God what CD to have you sell. A little Christmas gift. To WHFL TV. Amen. It's money you're investing. Yes. In, in the God's lives kingdom. of people. Mm -hmm. And it's going to bring you a mega harvest. That's what we like to do is invest in you with the word. Stay in the word. Put the word to work the word. Put it to good use. And you will never be sorry. Right, babe? Absolutely. All right. So until next time, or every morning at 8 30 Eastern. Yeah, for Rich, Rich Thoughts for, for Breakfast. breakfast. We'll talk to you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.